Hey everyone, in today's video I'll be sharing my go-to settings with my Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II camera. After I made the video review of this camera, I thought it would make sense to follow up with another video where I discuss camera settings. But before we get started, a quick note. These settings aren't a one-size-fits-all solution and I'm not here to tell you what's best for everyone. These are simply the settings that work for me and my style of shooting. I'll not only walk you through the specific camera settings I prefer, but also showcase my custom menus, where I've streamlined access to the most frequently used options. This is a guide that applies not only for the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II, but also to other Fujifilm cameras, such as the X100V or XE4. I understand that settings are just one aspect of photography, and I want to emphasize that your ability to notice moments and be comfortable with your camera is equally, if not more, important. So feel free to play around with these settings, switch them out if they don't work for you, and don't feel obliged to use them just because I do. If you have any questions or thoughts along the way, drop them in the comments below. I'm here to help. And now let's jump into my camera settings. Let's start with a few physical camera setting dials. Usually I set my shutter dial on auto because I often change the aperture and ISO depending on the situation and leave camera to determine shutter speed. Sometimes I will change it manually too if camera sets it too low. Also I might use the exposure compensation dial too. However I noticed that when ISO is set to auto and I use the exposure compensation dial it tends to increase the ISO setting first, even if it could lower the shutter speed without it being being too slow. So I usually use the compensation dial when I've set the exact ISO I want to avoid unnecessary noise in daytime images, for example. There are times when I just don't want to think about camera settings, so I put it in full auto mode and then tweak the exposure compensation dial. Now let's dive into the camera menus. And first I want to discuss other buttons and dial settings because they are essential for comfortable camera operation. In the setup menu there is a button dial setting. The first option is focus lever setting, referring to the joystick on the back of the camera. It helps navigate through menu and change the focus point while shooting. I keep this option on, but if you prefer to focus first and then recompose, you can turn off this function to avoid accidentally moving the focus point with the joystick. Next is the quick menu settings activated by pressing the Q button on the camera. There are separate options for photo and video and you can choose between 4, 8, 12 and 16 slots to be shown. Mine quick menu goes like this. ISO, white balance, photometry, face eye detection, grain effect, image quality, film simulation, self timer, though I almost never use it, shutter type, flash function setting and EVF and screen screen brightness settings. Open this menu, go through the available options and set those settings you use the most for easy access on the go. Now let's talk about the function and other button settings. One thing I don't like about the X-T30 Mark II, as I mentioned it in the review video, which I will link in the description below, is that the play button is on the left side of the camera, making it hard to reach safely with one hand. So I set the function button on the top right to act as the play button. We also have a touch screen where we can set four gestures to act as function buttons. I don't use gestures much, but you can try them out to see if you find them useful. The AEL button stands for Auto Exposure Lock, handy when shooting outside with changing lighting conditions. Pressing this button locks the set exposure, allowing you to recompose without changing the exposure. I set the AFL button to Photometry, since I use Focus Lock by half pressing the shutter button. But if you prefer to use AFL button to focus and then just press the shutter button to take the picture, you'll need to turn off shutter half press focus in button dial settings menu. Now let's talk about the camera dials. I set the back dial as ISO, and when I press it, it opens the ISO menu. I use it when shooting with manual ISO, and when I want to shoot with auto ISO, I find it faster to set it through the ISO menu, especially since Fujifilm cameras have three auto ISO options, and in that menu you can visually see what each auto ISO settings include. The front dial is set for aperture and shutter speed settings. Note that to change the shutter speed setting with this dial, you'll need to set the 
main physical shutter speed dial into T mode. You can also set the third setting on the front dial to either exposure compensation or ISO. So with this front dial you can easily operate three different settings. Of course, as long as you remember what three settings you've assigned to that dial. Before we continue, if you enjoyed this video so far, please leave a like and consider subscribing to this channel. Now on the second page of the button dial setting, you'll find touch screen settings. Here you can turn the touch screen on or off. Some find it annoying, but I keep it on because in certain situations, Focusing with the touch screen is faster for me than changing the position of the focus point with the joystick. However, I usually use the joystick more because it's easier to do while holding the camera with one hand. Here you can also turn off those screen gestures if you don't need them, so they won't accidentally trigger any menu. The last one, EVF touchscreen area setting, is useful if you tend to shoot through the EVF. You can choose the part of the screen that would be touch sensitive, allowing you to change the focus point position in instead of relying only on the joystick for that. If you go to use a setting in the setup menu, there you can configure my menu and add useful settings for easy access. I don't have much on mine as I've already set most functions in other places. But one thing that annoys me and I haven't found a solution is that you can't add memory card format function to my menu. It's strange because to format the camera you need to press menu, then go left, then up, then right, press user setting and only then format. This is quite an extra amount of steps compared to if you could just press menu and in the my menu section have the format function set. Now let's talk about IQ menu which stands for image quality. Here you'll find all the settings for the creative side of the camera, including image format, film simulation, grain effect, color chrome effect, white balance and so on. I won't go into the details of what I have set on my camera because it depends on the situation and film recipe you use, so each of you will have your own settings here. What's important in the IQ menu is at the bottom under the custom setting section. As film simulation recipes are popular among Fujifilm users, there is an option to save up to 7 different film recipes in the camera. You can change the names for the slots and you can choose whether to enable auto-update custom settings or not. If auto-update is off, you change your saved custom settings and then you switch off your camera, it will reset everything to the original settings, sometimes causing a confusion. You can keep auto-update on, but be cautious as all changes will be saved and you might lose your initial look or film recipe that you set. My advice would be to write down your favorite recipes and check from time to time if they've changed in the camera. To change between those saved custom settings, you can do it either in this IQ menu or in the quick menu by pressing the Q button on the back of the camera. If you tinker with your settings on the go and suddenly want to reset them, if your auto save setting is off, you can switch to another custom setting in the quick menu and then switch back and your settings will be as you initially saved them. Next, in other menus like AF and F, you'll find usual camera settings for focus. I set my AF mode to all, because when you change the position of your focus point, you can also change the size of the focus point with the back camera wheel. So when AF mode is set to all, you can easily change from a tiny focus point to zone or even a wide focus area on the go, depending on your needs. There you'll find settings for face face eye detection. I put it in quick and my menus because, for example, if I'm shooting my family, I want the camera to focus on their faces. But keep in mind, when eye face detection is on, you won't be able to change the photometry setting as the camera will expose only according to the face it is tracking. Lastly, in the shooting section, I don't do much, to be honest. I change the drive setting on the physical camera dial on top, photometry I have faster access to, shutter type I also added to my menu, but this is the setting to change between mechanical, electronic or hybrid shutter. I mostly shoot with mechanical and turn on the electronic shutter when I want to shoot in silent mode. Here you'll also find the image stabilization settings if your lens has one and ISO, which I have covered already. So I guess this concludes my Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II camera settings review. Let me know in the comments whether it was helpful to you and made it easier to understand camera settings and how not only to operate them, but how to set an easier access to most important settings for you. If you have any questions regarding camera settings or shooting in general, please do leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe so I could see you in the next one, but for now, have a nice day and keep shooting.